Yes, hello. Can you see the slides? Yes, we can see you and hear you. OK, ah, sounds good. OK, so my name is Sultan Hassan. I'm currently in um, uh, New Mexico State. I will be joining the Flat Iron uh, in a few months. And this work is uh, in collaboration with Max. He's currently now at John Hopkins. Um, so this work is basically about our understanding about galaxy evolution and how that can impact um, our understanding also of uh, <clears throat> of Lyman alpha observation. So let me just start. Um, let me start by showing this plot. This is our uh, most updated constraints about Lyman alpha fraction. What you see in the y axis, basically, this is uh, the abundance of Lyman alpha emitters, if you want to say, uh, evolution as a function of redshift. And these all are the measurements. What you see here is that uh, the, the abundance increases up to redshift of six. And all of the sudden, there is a drop here. And this drop is very interesting drop because uh, it has been mainly used to constrain our understanding about the IGM and uh, the neutral to, to estimate the neutral fraction of the IGM. And so the idea here is that whether uh, whether we can, re is it really due to the IGM or something else? So this is, can only be valid, this drop in the yeah, abundance, if galaxies themselves do not evolve. So if they, we don't have any evolution in the galactic properties, in their uh, column densities, outflows, in their, all the properties that they have, they, they stay fixed or they have a minimal evolution, then you can safely say, yes, this drop is really due to the IGM and reionization, right? So this is the main idea of the talk. We want to see the conditions by which galaxies, the evolution in galaxies themselves can really uh, reproduce this drop. Uh, so just to see like the basic arguments here. So this equation relates uh, the, the observed uh, Lyman alpha luminosity with the intrinsic luminosity. And this relation is set by uh, the transmission in the IGM. And this is how uh, basically the idea of getting like the observation of Lyman alpha, uh, the drop in Lyman alpha abundance or fraction uh, by using this transmission in the IGM to, to try to quantify the neutral fraction. Um, however, there is this component is the FSK, which is highly debatable in, in high rate shift. We don't, it's, it's uh, least constrained at these high redshift epochs. And it mainly captures the physics of the IC, uh, ISM and also for the CDM. Um, so this is here the goal of the, 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 the talk and the work is, um, is to see, to fix the IGM. We don't really uh, change anything about the IGM. We, we, we assume it's fixed and we want to change how the galaxies behave, right? And their behavior is set by their galactic properties. Um, so in order to do this accurately, you need to model the ISM. The ISM is very complex to model um, and it's very expensive. And at the same time, you need some, some models that really uh, explore broader uh, parameter range um, uh, very quickly. So we, come, we, we use this shell model. It's um, Monte Carlo radiative transfer. Uh, run on a shell model, so you assume all galaxies are shell, and in that shell you have an expanding velocity. This is the outflow velocity that we expand, and you have also the amount of neutral <coughs> hydrogen. So we want to change this, and we want to see how the FSK would really mimic uh, the behavior of reionization here. Um, so then if you do the calculation of the Lyman alpha fraction, and you go through the equation, uh, you would realize this drop, uh, if you want to reproduce the drop from redshift of six to seven, it's really equivalent to the drop if the F escape goes to its half value. So if you have a reduction in the F escape by half, so you would assume that all galaxy population, the, all of the sudden just they reduce their F escape by half. And this is reasonable also assumption because we see that from previous talks now, we will do require an evolving F escape to match the constraint. So, uh, it's really, uh, nobody really knows whether it's evolving or whether it's really constant. And so uh, if you want to match the redshift of seven, you can say it, it's dropping by half. Probably if you want to match, if you want to start from redshift to six to eight, maybe that might be a drop by a third. But at the end of the day, let's say it's half to redshift of seven. And we want to see these conditions. So if you, this, this plot now, when you run the shell model and you change your parameters for a uh, different uh, amount of dust and for different like uh, outflow velocities, 
uh, you would see that the general behavior is that the F escape goes down as you increase your column density, of course, because you are going to denser regions. Um, different column, uh, different dust, of course, dust, as you increase the dust amount, because the dust destroys the photons, right? So then you have a uh, reduction in the F escape as you go down. Uh, the outflow velocity would increase your F escape. So there is a degeneracy between these two effects here. But the main idea is that the factor of two is really possible. It's not really possible if you look at, at the very little amount of dust. It's very hard to reproduce this factor of two. But any amount of dust that is higher probably than 0.2 in optical depth, uh, you might be able to get the factor of two. For example, if you look at, um, at uh, column density at 10 to the 17, you get by 0.04 if you're following this line, uh, red line. Then if you increase the column density up to close to 10 to the 19, you get the factor of two. So it's possible to change that. However, the change here is huge if you start from a low column density. But if you go to a very high column density, the change is very small and you should be able to reproduce the observation. So the, the idea here is that the factor of two by changing the column density is entirely possible. However, you can do the same ex uh, experiment by uh, looking at how the outflow velocity changes, different colors, different dust amount. Of course, the dust uh, reduces your F escape. And the photon escape fraction here, you see that it, it increases as the outflows. At, if you have a more expanding shell or have the, the galaxies, the outflows is higher, then your F escape goes higher. Um, so then uh, it's also with a little dust, it's very hard to reproduce the amount of um, uh, a factor of two in F escape or factor of three, if you want to go to redshift of eight. But then if you follow this dashed blue line, let's say for different column densities, like this is a column density of 10 to the 20, uh, you realize that you need outflow velocity probably close to 300. But then if you reduce that to less than 100 or close to 100, then you might be able to reproduce that drop. So it's again, but here you have to go the opposite way. So you need to start at redshift of six in a very high velocity. And then the velocity um, uh, drops. And therefore, you get a very drop in the F escape that mimics reionization, basically. So also changing these galactic properties does not only change your F escape, but also it changes the spectral shape line. And this is something also, it can be tested with the observation, right? So what we see here in this plot, this is the Lyman alpha line uh, for uh, different models at six and seven. And for different column densities, uh, that the um, for for a fixed amount of uh, uh, dust and uh, velocity, and you see this model, they do have a difference of half escape fraction, so they do mimic the behavior of um, uh, the Lyman alpha drop, the observed drop, and therefore what you see when you increase your column density, you are increasing the width of the line, right? So it's 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 uh, it's something that can be tested. You can see this behavior. If you see that behavior in the observation, you know that now um, you, when you increase your column density, all of a sudden your, uh, your um, uh, line uh, increases, the width increases, right? However, from the observation, what we know is that it's the opposite scenario to changing the column density. This is the candle survey. Um, uh, and and for this is uh, for this is spectrum, what you see here, this is a stacks at redshift of six and seven, and what they show here, the lines are highly asymmetric, and if you look at their uh, equivalent width, you realize broader lines. If you have like a redshift of six, about three hundred uh, kilometer per second, and a redshift of seven, about two hundred twenty. So it me it it seems like the observation indicate that you have a broader line at lower redshift, right? And this is really in opposite way what we have seen with the column density. However, you can get it right if you change your outflow velocity. So the outflow velocity would reduce your width. And this is what you see here. Uh, you, you have two models of six and seven for different um, outflow velocity, um, uh, nearly 140 and 40 uh, kilometers per second for a fixed amount of dust, of course, and a fixed um, uh, column density. So what you see here is that when you, uh, this is not an also a consistent comparison with the previous block because that one was a stack, the uh, uh, stacks of spectra, this is only one, one run, uh, but it gives an idea and the example is that galaxies can really, the changing galaxies can really do the same. 
Um, so if you look at the spectrum, spectral shape at redshift of six, you realize your FSK is about 0.26, but then your uh, width is about 300, which is the, the same thing that we have seen now from the observation at redshift of six. When you change out blow velocity by a factor of 100, uh, you reduce that by a factor of 100, your FSK goes down by 0.12, so it's nearly half that reproduce the drop. And at the same time, you get this, the width of this red peak is really the, the, the 220 kilometer per second, which is consistent really with this. It's not really consistent because it's, the, it's not one-to-one -one comparison. As I said, these were stacks, but it gives an idea that uh, the outflows can uh, can really reproduce this drop, and I would like just to mention here it's very it's very interesting that this blue uh, peak appears by redshift to seven as soon as you reduce um, your um, uh, your uh, velocity outflow velocity. So just my takeaway here, because of the time, um, it's really possible to reproduce the observed drop uh, just by galaxy evolution. The galaxy evolutions can also changing these galactic properties can really. Uh, change the Lyman alpha spectra, which can be tested with the observations, right? And we would, uh, and I guess to accurately um, estimate the neutral fraction and estimate cosmology from Lyman alpha observations, one need to take into account these potential changes, which with more data sets and more samples and more spectra in the future, we should be able to map this spectral line changes with the, with the galactic, um, uh, with the change in the galactic properties. And with that, I, I stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sultan. We've got a few questions already on Slack. So I'm going to start off with the highest ranked one, which is from Tontoons, who asks, why would the line alpha fraction decrease again towards lower redshift? I.e., why is there a peak at redshift six? Um, I guess that is, um, I guess that is also support the idea that, uh, that also support the idea that the IGM, uh, that, uh, that, um, because the universe is neutral, the, is more ionized, then you can see these, um, Lyman alpha emitters, right? But at the same time, uh, what we are saying here is that it's, um, it, it can be also dual effect, right? So it, uh, a change. In, um, in the galactic properties with the change in the IGM together can, can explain these possibilities, right? So, um, so I guess just my, uh, my, uh, my answer here is that it's possible that the IGM uh, is doing uh, the job uh, that because it's ionized, you can see many of them, but at the same time, um, uh, it might be also possible that we have contribution from a change in the galactic, in the galaxy evolution. Thank you. And another question here, this time from Maxime. Um, do you have any sense for how your model will be affected by a more complex geometry than a homogeneous shell? For example, a shell with holes or with a velocity gradient? Yeah, that of course will uh, will highly impact the F escape. Uh, but these models, yeah, so it will only uh, affect, I guess it will affect our, like the, the estimation of the F escape fraction. And then it will be, um, it will be interesting to check that. However, it's very hard to model, like if you want to explore a large uh, parameter space of these models, uh, the ideally, um, I, uh, it's very hard to do that with, um, uh, with, with an, uh, like an accurate ISM simulations. You wouldn't be able to explore that large parameter space very quickly. You need to run it for month and month and uh, it takes very long time. So just this is here to just to give a quick idea about how it's done. But of course, it would be interesting to see that change when you have more idealistic environment, which of course, it will change how the FSK behavior behave, of course. Okay, I think time for one more question, this time from Charlotte Mason who agrees that it's really important to take into account the intrinsic evolution, but do you have a physical interpretation for why these properties would evolve so rapidly during this time period? Well, again, I mean, we, they are so many uncertainties here, right? So we don't know, we, we don't know much about the F escape. We don't know about the, how the dust, how the metallicity changes. Um, so all these things is very, um, it's very interesting to, to, to understand more with the, with, the, with the future observations. But I, um, but it's really um, uh, from the models of reionization that we have seen now, uh, 
an evolving F escape with redshift is entirely possible. One would imagine, no, why the, why would the, why would photons really care about the time by which uh, at which they emit it, right? It doesn't really uh, make sense. But then the models, many models of reionization do really um, uh, include an evolving F escape to match the observation. So the idea that the photon escape fraction for galaxies populations. Uh, should change with time. It's it's an idea uh, important for many theoretical models, and because of the uncertainty in the F escape, we don't know much about this. Um, so it's it's possible. It's possible that, and we have seen now uh, changing only two parameters. That one can change other parameters, possible other parameters, if you have more complicated models, and then you should be able to distang to distangle the, distangle these effects and see which which effect is leading more. But with this simplified model, it's very hard to, uh, to explain the observations with only two parameters. You need probably more ide ideal simulation to do so. But this is, gives us like first order approximation of uh, what could happen and what should change, right? Thank you again, Sultan. And apologies to everybody who asked the question, but we didn't have time for. Hopefully Sultan will be able to answer them on Slack.